So it's time to ready up your skills in the Linux command line, or the Linux terminal. And if you haven't seen the first one, go check out the first video I made where it's the five Linux commands every beginner should know. And in this case, it's five more Linux commands that every beginner should know. Now, last time we covered the some very essential Linux commands that every beginner needs if they want to get into the terminal. You don't need to use the terminal these days. You can just use a GUI apps in the desktop. You don't have to worry about the terminal anymore. But if you want to, well, let's dive deeper into five more practical commands that'll help you manage, search through your system, and also maybe speed up your workflow. So these commands are easy to learn, but very, very powerful. There's, you can take them, some of them even farther, so they're a little bit more complicated than we're going to cover today, but they are very, very cool, and you'll see that very quickly how useful these commands can be. The first command we're going to talk about is called grep, or G-R-E-P. This is basically a system to search through the text inside of files. Not just search for files, but search inside of the files provided that you have files that can that that can be done with for example a txt file or a, a .md file for markdown or something like that where the system can actually see what's in it so don't expect it to find stuff inside of videos that would be cool but also not very practical so let's do it with grep we can search for linux inside of a notes.txt file so we're going to put grep space quotes or you have to quote and unquote. Everything you search for will needs to be inside of quotes so it knows what to look for. And you'll put Linux inside of those quotes. And then next you tell it what file to look through. So this would be the notes.txt file in our home folder. Now you can also search multiple files by using a wildcard or asterisk. So you do grep space quote error unquote space asterisk dot log and that would look for all of the files in whatever directory you're in by default you're going to be in your home directory but if you move and run that command just like if you run that command in a different folder it'll be whatever folder you're in i said home directory for the previous one because by default you will be in your home directory always when you open a terminal uh, but if you move around with cd like we talked about in the previous video then you would do it what this would happen on whatever the directory you're currently in is. Now next, what if you want to search for something that you're not really sure how it's uh, capitalized, for example? So you would do grep space dash i, and that means insensitive search, quote Ubuntu, unquote. And then after that, you would put in system underscore info dot txt, for example. It could be any file, but you know, you get it. And this would search for the word Ubuntu, regardless of the case of the letters. So, for example, if you have uh, Ubuntu properly capitalized with a capital U and then the rest lowercase, it would find it. If they're all lowercase, it would also find it. And if they're all capitalized, it would still find it. But typically, it's case sensitive. So if you don't put that dash I and you specify a capitalization, it will look exactly for that capitalization, which is great if you only want to see those that kind of data. But if you want to have all of the instances being found, then you would do the dash I for insensitive search. But don't be insensitive to your system. Case insensitive is okay though. And next, this is probably gonna be the most powerful thing, and you can actually combine all of these kinds of parameters together. Uh, I'm giving you one example at a time, but you can actually combine these together and search for uh, multiple different configurations with all of these uh, parameters and operators. So next, what if you want to search through your directories, but you wanna do every directory and every subdirectory to find the uh, data that you might have, but you don't know the name of the file. So for example, we will say grep dash R for recursive search. And then inside the quote unquote, we'll put function underscore name. And now in here, we'll just put, you know, scripts folder. And there could be multiple folders inside of those script folders with multiple different kinds of scripts with multiple different types of files as well. So we're just gonna search for this and by putting the dash R, it will have a recursive search. So every file that it can read and every file inside of every folder or subfolder will be able to be read through grep this way. And it's very helpful. So if you want to uh, basically find something you're not really sure exactly, you know what you're looking for, but you don't know what file it is, this is a great way to find it. 
In the previous video, we talked about how you can move and copy files and remove files, but we didn't talk about renaming files or moving those files. So let's do that now with MV. So MV allows you to move files. And if you do it in the same folder, it will do a rename instead of a move. So if you do MV space old name dot TXT space new name dot TXT, then it will simply rename that file because it's effectively moving it from one name to the next name. But if you do it in the same folder, it's a rename rather than a move. But you can also do it with other folders, of course. So if you run the command MV space report dot PDF space tilde slash documents slash reports slash then it will move the report.php.pdf file into the reports folder. And also, if you want to rename it, you could put at the very end of that reports slash, you can add a different name there. So if you would like to, and not just move it, but rename it as you move it, you can combine those two things. You can also move a bunch of files all at once. So if you have a lot of like different files, like photos or text files or whatever, you could do, for example, this. If you wanted to move all of your PNG files, you could do MV space asterisks, which is the wildcard, and then dot PNG space tilde slash pictures slash screenshots slash, there you go. And then you just run that command and it will move all of your dot PNG files, regardless of their file name, into that folder. Up next, we have makedir or MKDIR. This is to create directories. And if you want to do just a simple process of creating a single directory, you do mkdir or makedir space and then the name of the folder like projects, for example. You can also do something that is very powerful here because you can do two different things where you have multiple folders involved. So for example, if you want to create multiple directories all at the same time in the same folder that you're in at the current folder, you do makedir space videos, space photos, space music, and all of these directories will be created all at once. The next thing you can do is actually nested directories as well, which is very helpful if you have a lot of organizational structure like I do. So mkdir or makedir space dash p space documents slash 2025 slash taxes, for example. This slash part will indicate that you want to make subfolders. So it creates, it creates a documents directory, which contains a 2025 directory. Then inside of that also contains a taxes directory. Up next is the touch command, which is basically a way to create empty files or update the timestamps of an existing file. So for example, to create a new empty file, you would type in touch space notes.txt, and it will create an empty file named notes.txt. This is really helpful for some file managers that don't have a quick access to create new files. You can use this to quickly do that. And if you wanna make a bunch of new files, you can do that as well by doing touch space file1.txt, file2.txt, space file3.txt. And this will create three empty files very quickly. And if you would like to update the timestamp with the current date and time, which is useful for triggering processes dependent on file changes, for example, you could do touch space existing file dot txt, and that would update the information. And then whatever script you have connected, which we'll talk about in the future about making scripts, because I do want to create a series helping people get in, involved into the terminal because it is very powerful. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it also absolutely can be complicated. <laughs> Depending on how far you go, there, is a, there are some commands I have written that even I don't remember what they do because it's so complicated. But anyway, <laughs> so this is a great way to activate those kinds of scripts. Now let's talk about the history command. This is a very useful command, but by default, it d gives you a lot of details. <laughs> so. You don't necessarily want to use the default way, which is just typing in history, which is good, but it displays a list of everything you've executed with numbers identifying which one. So if you wanted to find out what number it was that you could reuse it in the future, you could use it that way, but there's some other ways. So let's jump into that part. And that is combining the history command with the grep command. So if you use history space, the pipe symbol, which is the straight line, and then space grep 
space, quote, apt, unquote, it will find and list all of the past commands that you have ran that contains the letters APT, and or basically whenever apt command you've ran, it will show you all of them. And if you want to put more information, like how many times you do apt update and apt upgrade, you can also extend that search to whatever you want, which is really cool. So if there's a command that you have, you know, you remember doing, but you forgot what it was exactly, you can just search for something that's part of the command and it will tell you the re what the whole thing is in the result. Now, like I said earlier, if you know the number of a pre-existing pre command that you've already ran, you can run that number again by simply doing exclamation one, two, three. That's it, the exclamation point, then one, two, three, provided it was the 123rd command that you ran. In order to find what the number is, again, you would just run the original regular history command without any parameters. Another thing you can do is combine the pseudo command that we learned in the first video with the history command and one of the history command operators you can do is the exclamation that I said before but if you do exclamation exclamation which all the well, by the way sometimes that referred to is as bang you know like bang and in the comic books they would always end with an exclamation so it's been nicknamed bang the bang uh, symbol so if you do sudo exclamation exclamation or sometimes you'll hear people say sudo bang bang it will redo whatever your previous command was and add sudo in front of it so if you just run bang bang it will copy it will redo what you just did but the most useful version of that is if you accidentally run something that you forgot to put sudo on and it tells you like hey this will this needs ex ex uh, elevated privileges then you would do sudo bang bang or exclamation exclamation and then, well, suit of space, exclamation, exclamation. And then that would be uh, a really huge time saver for anybody who is you know, new to the Linux platform because there will be times that you should be using sudo and you don't know it. And then you have to like, oh, I don't want to type this all again or go through the history command and you know, whatever. If you just do this, it saves a lot of time. Now, there's a lot of stuff you can do with the history command. It is a very powerful and useful thing. So you can dig in more if you like. Uh, but of course, also be sure to subscribe to the channel because I have more terminal tutorials coming out uh, at some point in the future. And uh, there's going to be a lot of these kinds of things. So if this is useful to you and you want to know more about terminals, then be sure to subscribe. And also subscribe anyway because I also make videos that are not terminal related that are news related or that they're just cool applications I find or cool distros that I've been trying and stuff like that. So subscribe regardless if you're interested in terminal stuff or not. Follow if you got to the end of this video, you probably are interested in terminal stuff, so definitely subscribe. And if you want more content right now, then check out the latest episode of my news show, This Week in Linux. You can check it out right here. It is a fantastic podcast. It is the greatest podcast that has ever been created on the history or in the history of the world that I host by myself. It's a strong qualifier, but technically it's true because it's the only one I host by myself. <laughs> and also check out this one. Uh, YouTube says that you'll like it uh, and I made it, so it's probably great. So check it out too. Oh, also, um, well, maybe right over here, I don't know, somewhere over here, Here's a link to my podcast, Destination Linux, which I do with Ryan and Jill. It's a lot of great fun. If you've never seen it before, you're going to love it. It's a huge amount of fun, and I, I think you're going to be uh, happy that I promoted it to you, not just because I don't even know what I'm saying. Just go check out the podcast. It's great.